In today's video tutorial, I'll be looking at sketching y equal to the modulus of f of x and y equal f of the modulus of x. Now, to sketch these two graphs, you have to follow the following basic steps. So, sketching y equal to the modulus of f of x. Step one, you need to sketch y equal f of x. Once you've done that, you move on to step two. You reflect anything below the x-axis in the x-axis. And that there are the steps of sketching y equal to the modulus of f of x. Now, sketching y equal f of the modulus of x. Step number one, you need to sketch y equal f of x for x is greater than or equal to zero. That is the first step. Once you've done that, you reflect your sketch in the y-axis. So, I'm going to be using these steps over here to sketch graphs of the form where the modulus is outside the function and where the modulus is inside the function. Okay, right, now I've got four coordinate grids and four different functions. Now, if you look at each of these functions, what you can see is that the modulus is outside the function. Hence, we're sketching graphs of the form y equal to the modulus of f of x. So we have to follow these two steps over here. Right, let's look at the first one. I want to sketch y equal to the modulus of x. I'm going to first sketch y equal x. So that there is y equal x. The second step is to reflect anything below the x-axis in the x-axis. There you go. Now just rub out what you had below the x-axis. That there is a graph of y equal to the modulus of x. Now, second one, I want to sketch y equal to the modulus of x squared minus 3x minus 10. I am going to first sketch y equal x squared minus 3x minus 10. I know that the x-intercepts are minus 2 and 5. The y-intercept is minus 10. The graph looks something like this. It's a positive quadratic because the coefficient of x squared is positive, hence we have a u shape. Okay, anything below the x-axis, like we did in the previous question, is reflected in the x-axis. Okay, so this part over here gets reflected in the x-axis to give me something like this. So I can rub out what I have below the x-axis. The new y-intercept, ladies and gents, will be 10. That there is the graph of y equal to the modulus of x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay, right, let's move on to question number 3. I would like to sketch y equal to the modulus of ln x. I know what the graph looks like. It looks as follows. There you go. The asymptote is the y-axis or you could say the line x equals 0. The x-intercept of y equal ln x is just 1. Now, the next step is to reflect anything below the x-axis in the x-axis. So if I reflect this part over here in the x-axis, I get something like this. There you go, okay? I can rub out this part here. And that there is my graph of y equal to the modulus of ln x. Let's look at the next one, y equal to the modulus of e to the power x minus 3. First of all, I know what the graph of y equal e to the power x looks like. It looks like this particular sketch over here. The y-intercept is 1. Now, if I have e to the power x and minus 3 on the outside, what I need to do is take y equal e to the power x and shift it three units downwards. So, we're, so we are applying a transformation. The asymptote for y equal e to the power x is the x-axis. So if I shift three units downwards, the new asymptote will be y equal minus 3. Uh, the y-intercept of y equal e to the power x is 1, so the y-intercept of y equal e to the power x minus 3 will be 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. Okay, so the graph looks something like this. 
The x-intercept I can calculate by substituting y equals 0 in this equation and making x the subject. But I'll leave that. OK, right. The next step is to reflect anything below the x-axis in the x-axis. So my first observation is that this asymptote, y equal minus 3, becomes y equal 3. So I'm going to draw that asymptote. And if I reflect this part over here in the x-axis, I get something like this. Okay? There you go. The new y-intercept will be 2. Now, I can rub out anything that I have below the x-axis, so I'm going to quickly do that. So, that there is my beautiful sketch y equal to the modulus of e to the power x minus 3. Let's have a look at another four different functions. So, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, what we can observe for each of these functions is that the modulus is inside the function. Hence, we're sketching graphs of the form y equal f of the modulus of x. We are following these steps over here. Now, I'm going to follow these two steps over here to sketch the first one, y equal 4 modulus of x minus modulus of x cubed. I know that this is a negative cubic with x intercepts minus 2, 0 and 2. Okay, and the shape of the graph is as follows. There will be no bounds because if you factorize there is no repeated factor. Okay, right. That there is my graph. I want to sketch it for x is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to get rid of uh, the part of the graph that represents x is less than 0. So this part here. Okay, that there is the sketch for x is greater than or equal to 0. What I need to do next is reflect. Um, my sketch in the y-axis. So if I reflect this in the y-axis, I get something like this. Okay? So that x-intercept x is minus 2. That there is a sketch of y equal 4 modulus of x minus modulus of x cubed. Okay, let's look at the next one. y equals sine of the modulus of x. I need to sketch this particular graph where x is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to do that. But I'm going to restrict my range from 0 to 2 pi. Max 1, minimum minus 1. Okay, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. What I need to do next is reflect my sketch in the y-axis. So if I do that, I obtain the following. Something like that. And that there is my sketch of y equals sine of the modulus of x. Let's move on to the next one. So, question number three is y equal e to the modulus of x plus 2. Okay, first of all, we know what the graph of y equal e to the power x looks like. If I have y equal e to the power x plus 2, all I'm doing is taking y equal e to the power x and shifting it two units upwards. So I'm going to sketch y equal e to the power x plus 2. The new asymptote will be at y equal 2. And the new y-intercept will be at 3, because 1 plus 2 is 3. The y-intercept of y equal e to the power x is 1. Okay, so 1 plus 2 is 3. Here's my graph. Okay, so that is the graph of y equal e to the power x plus 2. 
But what I need to do is sketch this graph for x is greater than or equal to 0. So anything that represents x is less than 0, so any part of the graph that represents x is less than 0, I need to get rid of. So, you can get rid of this part here. I don't actually need this asymptote now. Okay. So that there is a sketch of y equal e to the power x plus 2 for x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, the second step is to reflect my sketch in the y-axis. So if I do that, I obtain the following. Something like that. And that there is my sketch of y equal e to the power of the modulus of x plus 2. Now, let's move on to question number 4. I want to sketch y equal 1 over modulus of x minus 2. The very first step is to sketch y equal 1 over x minus 2. Okay. Now, 1 over x minus 2 is just a reciprocal graph <coughs> with a vertical asymptote of x equal 2. Okay, it looks something like this. It's a positive reciprocal. Now, this looks it looks it looks pretty juicy, you know. Okay, so what can I do over here? Now, I've got my sketch. Remember, the sketch has to be for x is greater than or equal to zero. So what I need to do is get rid of the part of the graph that represents x is less than 0. So this part over here I can get rid of. There you go. Once I've done that, I need to reflect my sketch in the y-axis. So this particular asymptote, when you reflect in the y-axis, gives rise to another asymptote, which is x equal minus 2. Okay, x equal minus 2. Now, that part there, if you reflect in the y-axis, gives me the following. There you go. Okay, and this part over here, if you reflect it in the y-axis, gives me the following. Okay, so there you have it. That is the sketch of y equal 1 over the modulus of x minus 2. If I want to work out this particular y-intercept, all I can do is substitute x equals 0 into this equation. And if I do that, I obtain minus 1 over 2.